The bloodiest battle in the war in Ukraine has been the nine-month fight over Bakhmut. But this weekend, the Wagner mercenary group fighting for Russia said it had finally completely taken control of the eastern city. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, though, says Bakhmut is not occupied by Russia and that Ukrainian soldiers still control at least a small portion that would help them get back in. Well, France 24's chief foreign editor Rob Parsons has been looking at this story for us. He joins me now on the set. Rob, first of all, has it been confirmed that Russia really has taken Bakhmut? No. <laughs> uh, it's not clear at all. I mean, as is up. All, in fact, as has always been the case with Bakhmut over the last uh, few weeks and months, the situation has been very unclear. I think what we can say with some certainty is that the Russians do control the vast majority of the city, I mean, over 95 percent probably of Bakhmut. But the Ukrainians are clinging on to a corner in the southwest uh, around uh, what used to be a monument to an M-17 jet fighter, uh, now destroyed. Uh, and, and they're clinging on, I think, because they, they feel that the, the the tide of the battle around Bakhmut is beginning to sw swing slightly in their favor, not in the city itself, but in the areas around Bakhmut, to the north and to the south, uh, where they're beginning to take control of the heights around the city, so that uh, if the Russians do manage to make any further progress in, in, in Bakhmut, uh, they won't be able to draw any particular strategic advantage from it. On the contrary, they'll find themselves in a defensive posture against the, the Ukrainians in the surrounding heights. That is what the Ukrainians say they're trying to do, and the, certainly there have been signs over the last few days that they've achieved that. They've, they've gained ground in the north and the south of uh, the city of Bakhmut. What, what does so, you know, to, to go back to what the significance what might be, what might just be. You know, the Russians are trying to make a lot of it at the moment because they've had very few successes over the course of the, the war. Uh, but the reality is that Bakhmut is not a particularly significant gain for them. It's a small town which virtually nobody had heard of before the conflict started, even in Ukraine itself. Uh, it doesn't give them any particular platform for advancing towards the main towns of Slavyansk and Kramatorsk and that part of Donetsk region, which are the real targets for the Russians. Uh, and on it, on, on the other side of the coin, the Russians have lost an enormous number of men uh, and equipment during the, the fight for Bakhmut, which appears to have been uh, what the Ukrainians' aim has been all along, to draw the, the Russians into a conflict uh, around Bakhmut, an absolutely pointless conflict, which has cost them, as, as many Russian military bloggers themselves admit, has cost them an awful lot uh, in, in terms of effectiveness, drawn men away from other parts of the, of the front where they would be uh, better used to the Russian armed forces and allowed the Ukrainians in the meantime to prepare for their counteroffensive. That at least is what the Ukrainians are claiming. But the situation, as I said at the beginning, very unclear still. Mm. Now, this all came as uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, was at the G7 trying to drum up more support. Uh, what were the takeaways from that trip? Well, you know, the, the overall takeaway, I think, is th this was a major triumph for Volodymyr Zelensky. You know, it was. Uh, not sure until the very last moment that he was going to go there. It, it allowed him uh, complete control of the media around the G7. He was shown, you know, every hour virtually, you know, meet, meeting you know, together with all the leaders of the G7, separately with members of the G7, being hugged by members of the G7. Uh, you know, in, in terms of photo opportunities, he couldn't have done hoped for anything better. In terms of real takeaways, the solidarity announced behind uh, Ukraine by the G7 obviously extremely important. Uh, the progress made on the provision and training of pilots for the F-16 fighter jet, uh, obviously a big takeaway for him as well. But I mean, almost as significant as, as all that is the opportunity it gave him to make progress, diplomatic progress, uh, with countries outside the G7, in particular uh, the, the southern countries, of India, Indonesia and Brazil. Uh, he had a very good meeting, it seems, with uh, the Indian uh, Prime Minister. Uh, he didn't get the meeting, meeting uh, w with uh, President Lula of Brazil. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the overall position, I think, is that Ukraine will feel at least it's made some progress with these countries, which, although they've sat on the fence in the past on the issue of the war in Ukraine, have at least supported Ukraine on the question of sovereignty and territorial integrity. Thanks so much for that, Rob. France 24's Rob Parsons.